okay so welcome all let's start our 23rd bc open discussion um uh, i have certain questions from last week which are pending and then some new questions are there so we'll go through those and then if time permits we'll open it up for discussion let's go through the normals uh here is how you register using this link this get updated and available every saturday night after this meeting normally if you are here and you don't want to go to hassle of registering every week like most of you then in chat add your name and email address and then you don't have to register every week you will be invited every week okay so we had a follow up from prajendra last time about the editable property on the page where he was struggling on certain thing and we were talking about it just before everybody joined so let's look at that so prajendra what i have done and maybe this is not uh, what we were talking earlier and maybe we can try that is i kind of have this page extension on inventory setup field yeah and on every tab of that field i have set a table based on a variable mhm mm which is a global variable at the end mhm mm now this variable gets set or reset based on a action on that mm -hmm. page called change at table mhm mm once you set it it sets it to true or false based on that mhm mm Okay, so let's get that published, and then we'll see what how it's behaving. Okay, so it should be there at any moment. Okay, got published, and here is the the central client. I understand your what we were discussing earlier about having it on the a document page and then kind of okay. saving that field. I'm pretty sure that that way also it should work in the same way if if this works as as we are expecting it. Okay. So let's open our inventory setup, and here we are where it is right now set as editable because it's on view mode. Okay, I might have to set that. Okay, if I go back and change it to another table, is it something that you are looking for or something else? Ah, uh, that seems to be okay. That's a card page because if we have the sub page, then definitely if we need to be like sure that sub page is also non editable. so page will be also in the same lines because if you go to let's say on state orders let's say no but i'm just looking at the current page property eh? but you are defining the control on each group here current page dot editable you are trying to set that and is it actually required if you do it on tabs Let's see on the sub card thing as you're saying. Yeah. If I right, not let me add a new file of insert a dot page extension here, and the numbers that I'm using is sixty thousand. So the page extension. Um, and then on we have that groups right so yep. i can get the journal group and then also the lines group will be called something 
yeah. I do a modify on. I can check what the line group is called. Okay. So if I collapse journal, the part is called as sales line. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Sales line. I should be able to make it in the same way. Mm -hmm. Let's try to plug in here. Okay, and let's copy the action from there as it is. Let's do a publish. Okay, I guess that number happened. Uh, page ID 42. Change, context change. Control with invalid operation. Modification on editable property is not supported. Hmm. Okay, so I can't set on the sub page. That's interesting. So if I cannot set it on the sub page, and then what you're trying to do is you want to set it on current page dot at table, right? Yes. Okay, let's try that out. And then you have to update the page. And as somebody was saying in the last meeting, let you try setting that up as false. So if we go now to sales orders, once this get loaded, okay. Uh oh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Here, and then I put it under print. Print. Where I put it, let me see. Under the print action, okay. So, okay, here it is. Change to editable, no. Okay. So when you are trying to set it to true, then it is giving hmm. you an error. Yeah. It will, I think it will give you the error when you move to next or previous page. That time you will get the error message. If you set it to true. Okay. Still at the table. Anybody else have tried this? I'll have to check this on the card page. 
Okay. With the sub form, and maybe I'll, I'll I'll check and I'll let you know how that you know is supposed to work here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyone else in the meeting? I've tried something like this, uh, setting up the page editability based on an action. Okay, so maybe you are the first one doing that. Okay, well. We'll go through that. Let's see. Maybe in okay. the next meeting, I'll, I'll come back on that. No problem. Sarah. Hello. Hello. Hey. Sorrow. Yeah. I think can we? Uh, I just uh, I didn't try, but can we set on a on after get record? That is. No. So, page but of... it on the action. So you can't set it on on after get record, right? Yeah. yeah. I think this would work uh, somehow. Maybe you can Maybe. put it oh, like wait, a quote. Wait. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I guess I, I know what I'm doing. I did not. I, why I added this? Okay. If that editable boolean is not getting set anywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So Maybe you can add a field also. And then yeah. I just need to. Maybe add one, one field just in the sales. One, one field, field. One field on the sales header. One field or <laughs> means uh, set on sales. any one field. Uh, maybe what you can Hello, put uh, maybe boolean field on that sales header. Uh, maybe close or editable or non-editable based on that. When you click the action, that time that boolean will be true. And based on that, the page should be editable and non-editable. Oh, yeah. OK, that makes yes, sense. Yes, he's right. Let's see if this gives another message, because I just set it to editable okay. false at this point. Mm -hmm. OK, sales orders. Let's try that. And I'm going to action print. Uh -oh. I did click on something else. Yeah. Print the change status. It's still editable. Okay, I'll I'll try that, and then we can see that or discuss that in next week, or if time permits at the end. Okay, no problem, Sarah. I'll come back to that. Okay, so then next question is on from Syed and it is using memo blob to enable huge text in fact box. I'm trying to add item description three for each purchase line as blob in the fact box area, but I'm not able to insert or delete from this area. Is this normal? I use the same function on work description field using the sales order and I add those two functions in purchase line and I invoke those function in my fact box. So fact box are not a kind of place where you can add or modify information that is available. Those are just for the reading purposes majorly. And you know, the only fact box where you will see some action happening in any business central page, it would be on uh, customer card or vendor card. So like when you go to customer card, there is a fact box which shows you a picture like this. And then there are certain actions like you can import, export or delete a picture, which are actions. But nowhere in the system, you'll be able to edit a value which is specified on that fact box because it's just a fact that you can see. And then you can, you know, you like this is showing dimension, but you cannot actually add a dimension unless you add an action. And the way that uh, the area that you are referring is working on sales or on purchase documents is it is actually added into the main page where, let me show if you guys haven't seen it, this work description is actually a text field in the design where you can put unlimited text. And then once you move focus out of it, system actually converts that text value into a blob and then stores it. And whenever a page actually gets open, that value is fetched from that blob and converted to text into this field. So it's kind of a temporary field uh, where the data user can 
you, where user can key in the data. And then once the focus goes out of this field, behind the scene system actually converts that into a blob variable. So I'm pretty sure you can't do that into the fact box area. And if you have to do it on the lines, like you are saying on the purchase line, then add an action to add more details into that particular line. Like, like you have uh, comments or there is an extended text somewhere. Insert extended text. So in the same way, you can add an action which will then populate a page, which can be just having the work description. And then you can have the similar way as you, I'm pretty sure you understand because you have set that into question to have this field and having the same way that it works based on unique, based on the specific lines. But I'm pretty sure you can't do that into uh, a fact box in a page. So that's the only way that you can do it, that you can add an action on your line to attach additional description on your purchase line in your case, and then have that work description kind of similar architecture on that custom page, and then save it into the blob if you need it. As in, I don't understand why you need uh, per line so much description, as in how many of the businesses operators, they kind of keep that line as empty of type as empty and then keep on typing the description so that they can add additional description with this type comment. And this you know, also flows with your documents. You can also see history. I'm still not sure why you want a blob field. You should be good just with the description, you know, whatever comment you want to type, you can type it. It will go through as it is to your posted invoice and receipt and all. So I don't know. Is it seriously a business requirement or you're just trying something? Okay, next is from Dinesh. Uh, and this is about how you connect WooCommerce to Business Central from scratch. And, you know, I'm not doing any marketing here, but I know that ArchPoint have an app source app, uh, which is available on the app source, which does so many integrations, including Amazon, Shopify, mm -hmm. and they also support WooCommerce. <laughs> so if you are looking for a SaaS customer, then I would suggest go and, you know, look on the app source, you'll find so many uh, you know, apps which can do your integration to external entities like uh, Sweet Engine have this uh, channel sales manager for Shopify. It does a complete integration solution from Shopify to Business Central. Same for Magento, and I'm pretty sure there is one for Amazon. So there are others who, you know, apps which are available on app, app source who can help you with integration with WooCommerce. And those who don't know about WooCommerce, it's also a retail site like Amazon and all. And it's one of the most uh, uh, kind of famous e-commerce portal, portal as of today. But yeah, um, I'll not build the solution from scratch. And that's the whole idea of Business Central that if somebody have already done it, utilize that framework and then start using that. Anybody else have any thoughts about integration with WooCommerce or any experience with that? Saurabh, uh, I did uh, some uh, uh, work on WooCommerce and Shopify. Okay. And how hard would it would be or how easy it would be to kind of do it? It would be, I, I, think, I, I think there are uh, standard APIs like Shopify. For, right. for WooCommerce, the only challenge would be because uh, uh, the sandbox environment. For uh, Shopify, we can get the uh, sandbox environment uh, on the Shopify as an admin panel, the admin store, where we can right. create a sandbox or test our integrations. But for WooCommerce, we would need uh, some WordPress site. Right. So you need to register and then, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you have to publish and that, arrange that for 
that uh, WordPress site only. That would be the only challenge that I face. Otherwise, only the standard APIs are there. We need to call the JSON APIs and that can work. Means, means I recently I created and published an app that supports uh, Shopify, WooCommerce and Magento. Great. That's good. So yeah, uh, Dinesh, if you join sometime in future, or I guess you are here, Dinesh. See you in the list. Yes, sir. Okay, you can either talk to Vikas, or if your if your customer is using Business Central SaaS, then as I just showed you, there are already apps in place which you can utilize. Okay. Uh, otherwise, have a word with Vikas, and you know, you guys can talk and discuss about it more. Yeah, like uh, I really need like uh, guidance from Vikas. So I can talk. Yeah, you uh, guys can talk can, about it. You can ping me and we can discuss if you want something more. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Good, thank you very much. Okay. okay, so next in our queue is from Snehal and it's about how to create EDI in Business Central for purchase order and sales invoices and how we can do EDI configuration. I don't have any idea about EDI integration and please suggest a so, way to complete this task. Oh. Go ahead, Vikas. Uh, means this question was also from my end too. And actually recently I was working on the same and uh, I, I was trying to find something that uh, can be utilized directly from business center without using any third party API or any tool. So actually I was doing some R&D, so it will be helpful for me if you can share something about this. So the only interaction that I have with EDI is based on one of the ISVs, which is Alanum. And it's available for North America, and I'm pretty sure they are available for worldwide also. Uh, they have already built in solution for EDI integrations. Uh, called Lanum EDI and they are already as an extension on app source. Uh, they are also available on prem if you are doing on prem. And they sell the module based on, you know, they have different so many add ons uh, Lanum have and they sell their module based on pieces, whatever you want. I haven't done it from scratch and I know this is, you know, so many things are there in EDI. It's just not that one side of integration and all. It's a complete process um, from fetching the document to making, converting them to actual business central documents and then sending that data out to EDI also. So anybody else have any idea to build it from scratch? That's good, but I have no idea about building it from scratch. I've seen it, I've used it with so many customers and Lanum is one of the uh, most popular uh, uh, kind of reseller in North America for their eShip EDI solutions. So my recommendation would be to go with something which is already has been there in the market for a while and they have, you know, a whole set of team who works on building all these interfaces with EDIs and all. Because that helps you? Are you looking for something? Yeah. Scratch? Yes, sort of. Lena, one of our clients also you were using uh, Lenum vertical for NAV 18. Right. But actually, uh, our as our internal, we were we were thinking that we could build uh, some solution. Yes, as you said, there is uh, it's a versatile application. But, uh, that there are uh, so many things in uh, ASN, e ship um, so many things are there. But right. for uh, we were thinking to create some module wise uh, in the chunks, and actually I was doing some R and D like uh, that. Uh, uh, ad effect there was some site and others was also there, there was. so where we it, uh, ad effect provide some apis where we send the data in uh, json or xml format they can they convert to their x x12 that is edi standards x12 right. and x52 and other edi standards so this could work 
but uh, for this uh, means uh, here also we were using some third party like this ad effect right. i was thinking something that uh, any is there that uh, client and uh, direct uh, without involving any third party then there could be some apis we could have and then we could work but uh, me to, uh, as of now i couldn't find that yeah i haven't heard it and you know uh, me we kind of uh, it's good but then the the your idea is good the only thing is that you need to maintain that solution as as these things are keep on changing uh, yes, you need yes, to yes. keep pace uh, with the changes that are happening in that particular area so that becomes an overhead and that's why i was suggesting an, an existing you know a uh, known isv who is already working on that area and have a full fledged team who only works on it yes yes, yes. so okay. building a new solution from scratch is it's good idea but we also need to think from the perspective of maintaining those app keep them updated with whatever the market standards are changing and things like that yes. so that's why i was suggesting to you know but i personally haven't done anything from scratch on edi so i might not be the right person to maybe talk more about it from that perspective okay thank you okay welcome okay next up we have from shahid and shahid is here today and shahid question is how can we develop a workflow from newly development extension say leave application i would like to apply leave application approval process hmm. um shahid the last time yeah. i have done a kind of a uh, complete uh, approval or workflow development was in bc 13 i guess that's the time when i when i did it for a customer but i i kind of didn't document it i guess at that point but i was looking for uh, someone who have written about it and i found a, a linkedin article which is two three articles are there which are just kind of talking about how you build your workflow from scratch so i'll just find a link and i'll share it with you and you can then uh, follow that and you know kind of build your uh, api if, uh, sorry your workflow from scratch let me find that article i'll share the link okay here it is so this is a how to create a custom approval workflow in d365 business central about the claim document and you also also will go on the same line as you are saying about the leave management or you know leave application and uh, it goes through uh, from everything uh, what kind of events you need which kind of events you need to subscribe what table extension you'll have to create and you know how you'll add your approval status button on that page uh, how you kind of go and then add integration event on sending the claim request for approval and on cancel claim for approval and then you know which event you need to subscribe how they get added into the new company when you click on that so it goes through all those steps how you add a event into the library how you add a response into the library because a workflow is a combination of events and responses and when i'm talking about workflow events and responses don't confuse it with business central events so when you open your workflow uh, let me open that okay this is a little bit slow today i did update my docker maybe that's the reason okay what if i open my workflow and then pick one or create a new one from the template and let's say which is invoice workflow so this is an event and this is a response and based on a event 
you can have one or more responses and these are called workflow events and workflow responses. To make these available here on this lookup, you actually need to register those events into using, you know, using an event which is available in, in Business Central. And in the same way, you also have to register responses. And then from code, you also have to set uh, what we call that workflow hierarchy or let me see, event response combination. So whatever events versus responses you are seeing there is actually coming from this combination that against this event, these will be the responses that will be visible to the user. Again, I'm saying uh, the responses and event combinations are generated based on this page or this matrix that you're seeing this, but don't change these responses here because they are generated via code. So never come here and check this. It might be available for you, but there will be no code against it. So you, from your coding, you actually build this matrix and you add your events and responses into uh, your business central tenant as this article is talking about. Add events to library. So you'll have to add all the events that you're adding. In the same way, in the next article of the series, he's talking about how you add responses to library and then how you build that matrix. Uh, Sarah, I have a question related to the matrix page. Uh, if yeah, if we need to reset that uh, uh, that check marks we did by mistake, if somebody did by mistake, then if we need to reset that, uh, is there any code unit which which uh, which we can run and reset that all the options? In the so workflow matrix? normally that matrix is initiated when you initialize your company. Okay. So in your company initialize, there is a function which builds your matrix, which generates your template data. Like you always see either you upgrade or you create a new company in your business central. You'll uh -huh. always find that you will have some workflow templates already available. Correct. Yeah. Right. These, and they are not yeah. part of the data. Okay. They are all part of the code. So when you're okay. building your workflow, you need to make sure that you add your workflow into the templates. You need mm -hmm. to make, make sure that it is part of your company initialize so that whenever a user creates a new company, mm -hmm. th that workflow gets activated there. So and if I need to, here. okay. So if I need to add a new here, suppose what we are discussing like the leave approval. So if I right. need to add a new workflow, then somewhere I need to write the code. Maybe it's maybe the code unit one or somewhere else so that whenever we initialize that our company or whenever we create a new company so that time that workflow or template should be added automatically in that yes so if we you can see do that here yeah you can yeah. do that so yeah. uh, there is a global function on code unit two which is company initialize which calls the mm -hmm. setting up the workflow templates and then what this uh, you know uh, article is talking about is how you insert the claim approval workflow into the template so okay. then in this case, uh, that uh, this code would be subscribing to an event to add that. Okay. okay. And when it happens, when code unit two will run, this subscriber will also be called and your event will be fired and your code will be added there. Okay. So, you know, it's, it sounds, sometimes it sounds very simple to do uh, a workflow, but until unless you kind of keep these things into mind, Mm -hmm. how you actually build it from scratch and then yeah. always when you're working on workflows make sure during your testing you create a new company and see is your workflow available mm -hmm. there or not because otherwise okay. that can break the whole logic that you know, mm -hmm. it's available but it's not configurable okay so shahid what i'll do is i'll, I'll add this into the recording the link of this yeah please okay take some time Anytime you are working on workflow, my experience is take it slow. Don't rush toward it. And, you know, I, while I was doing it for the first time, I actually had to delete the database while I was testing it because I was completely going crazy at that point because that was the first time while I was doing it. So try it on Cronus, uh, build your extensions, and that should be completely uh, kind of installable and then configurable at the same time.
it may take some time but it's it's a fun process to do this without touching any base object and then making it the way other workloads are working thanks Rodob. i will i will go slowly and check it yeah i if i have some time in future i'll surely try it in business central i haven't tried it in business central but that's surely a fun thing to do thank you thank you okay and then we have this question from jay energy and i guess he's here but i have jay energy i have no idea about it so anybody who's working on dynamics nav indian localization i guess this question comes from there during invoices there is an error called newton soft dot json link you object parse failed So basically, sort of this error is coming when uh, the uh, response we received is not in JSON format. Maybe uh, in JSON format uh, means it's related to J object. Either right. we are receiving response that is in HTML tag, or it may be array. Oh, it may be JSON error or just a plain array. Yeah, it may be a, um, if it is a JSON. Uh, that is object file I started with right. country bracket that will easily right. read it. If there is a response like something we are getting for 05 or something, so in that case, system is not return, uh, returning data in JSON format. Basically, it is in HTML format. Oh. XML format, sorry. Yes, XML, okay, format. XML format. Yes, and uh, in the case when data is returned in array, so G object is uh, uh, actually not uh, not uh, getting exactly the data. So it should be read into array first and then from array array list that data should be transferred as a array uh, JSON object. Then it will uh, it, it will uh, it will be readable by G object. OK, so maybe it, it might be a little bit confusing and maybe next week I will we'll talk about it because I already have a question about it. But a typical JSON file, as Gaurav sir was saying, is this is the JSON object, the starting yes. of a JSON object, which always starts with the curly brackets. Right. Okay. Right. Anytime you see this symbol, this is a JSON array. Yes. Right. So Gaurav sir, correct me if I'm wrong. What, I, what you are saying is it's either actually returning an XML or a JSON array, not actually a JSON object. Right. right. So, uh, and Jay Banerjee, you are saying it's during the import? Yes, uh, that is the, that error comes even during the import. But uh, this uh, file uh, started with uh, early bliss and uh, Ended with also, and this is generated from uh, yeah, GST portal, government GST portal website. So the file is okay, but uh, it uh, it is in CU sixty one. It's shown that type of error. Uh, then it could be the when you are parsing with uh, uh, object uh, actually property name that property name is exactly not matching so that might be the case so uh, you mean to say that uh, the file is file may be wrong but uh, there yeah, is file no... may be correct uh, file may be correct but uh, when you are trying to parse it so basically when you are reading uh, uh, data in j object so J object when you are uh, actually when data you are receiving either you should call it through the JSON management code unit initialize from a string then you yes, can yes, get it into a, it will be easily readable if we are trying to J object get a dot select a token and then parsing JSON a string or uh, in bracket uh, J, JSON token and then then you are in bracket parsing some uh, property name so uh, for example uh, like uh, you are you want to read this configuration lines so this is the property name so in this pro uh, if you are missing something in uh, in this uh, text that maybe system is not finding and uh, you are uh, it, it will be giving error like this so if you want to uh, 
you want to read a whole object, then just use uh, JSON code unit, uh, JSON management code JSON unit. Management. JSON management code unit, you call the method initialize from a string and pass this string and then in J object, uh, get uh, there is another uh, function the property uh, value right yes another function in json uh, management code unit json management code unit dot get j object json object and uh, you need to just put this j object variable dot net variable the system will automatically parse these all uh, uh, text into the j object so to verify files j energy what i do is I'll, I'll copy the text that i need to verify and then these are online sites that are available to validate and format your JSON. Okay, I'll just paste it here. And then when I do a JSON validate, it'll show me that is it is the file is correct or not. And I don't okay, okay. So you know. I'll send you the file. So as in, you don't need to. These are you know open source website where you can go JSON formatter if you just search for it. And if JSON there are any errors, yeah. yeah. If there are any errors, it will list down. So this part will verify that your file is correct or not. And if your file is correct, then what God of is saying, then you can use the right code units to kind of read the property value combination from, right. you know, from your file. Okay. So this website will help you to verify that your file is correct or not. If your file is correct, then you need to work on your code to kind of read it correctly. Right. Right. You know, so if in my file, which I put here, if I kind of don't have this, this should give me an error at this point that there is an invalid ending. So it's not, it's expecting a closing here, which is not there. So this can help you to validate that the file that you're receiving from the government folder, is it correct or not? And if it is correct, then you just need to, uh, look at your custom code that you're writing to read that file. I'll add the link into the YouTube recording so you can use that if you don't find any other. Okay. 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 Understood. Thank you. And then I guess the last question that we have today is from Nishant about how you connect your VS code to your GitHub. And I don't know how many of you have worked on uh, with the source control and all. But the first thing that you need to connect your VS code to your GitHub or your uh, Azure DevOps okay. is this tool called Git SCM. You can go there on this website, download this tool. Once this is downloaded, it's just a straightforward next, next, next installation. Once you're done with the installation, then you will find these commands in your Git. All these commands you will only see when you have this software installed. It's a next, next, next software. So that should not be a problem. And for Nishant, what I've done is I have broken my connection to my GitHub. And that's, you know, kind of in your credential manager where your credentials are stored. So let's quickly see how you kind of clone that and all. So if I go to my, let me find my other session where my GitHub will be open. Okay, so here I am on Microsoft website, uh, oh, sorry, Microsoft GitHub portal. Uh, we need to understand that we can clone from any repo, but we, you know, should be committing I, I prefer to fork it and then commit on, on my own branch, or oh, sorry, on my own uh, GitHub portal. So if I go back to my portal, where I have all my repos, and let me see, if I pull one of the repo here, let's say what we used last week, or with Shahid's one maybe, and I'll copy this to clone this. I'll go back to my Git and I'll do a Git clone. It's a URL, click OK, add a path and say select repo. 
right now it's cloning that and it got cloned and you click open and you see all that source code into your local machine now it says that it's not connected to github because i've removed the credential so anytime you're working on any source control it's kind of a thumb rule and i'm pretty sure you can control this on your settings never write to your master or main always create your own separate branch to do any changes master or main is considered a kind of a true match to your customer tenant in case of business central any code that is in your master is expected to be available on your customer database as an extension so we never write ever into the master directly so the first thing that i'll do is i'll click on this and i'll create a new branch and say demo hit enter this will change to demo or whatever you want to call it but this branch is still available locally and i'll not be able to see it here in my github so i need to push this command or oh sorry push this branch back to my git for this what i'll do i'll go to source control using these three dots here i'll select to push my branch to git i'll say that the branch does not exist and i click okay because i haven't authenticated it yet and after installing that git scm which we did you'll get this icon or this window that i know you have cloned the branch but i cannot authenticate you as the actual owner of that git uh, you know repo from where you are pulling it so i'll say okay sign me in to the browser i'll open it i'll check that okay this is me i'll say okay authorize this I need my password once i validate it you can now close and it started synchronizing here and its synchronization is over so now if i come here i should be able to refresh this and see that there is a branch created demo on this so i see that there are three branches i go there and i see that the active branch is demo which was created you know uh, 18 days ago because i haven't changed anything so that's why it's saying 18 days ago so if now i go and just for testing i change something on my document as soon as i save this file i'll see that it's pending yet to go to git the readme.md and it says that it is changed now even on this branch i'll still see that my documentation or readme file does not have that line so before i need to move that uh, to my git i need to stage this change you can if there are multiple file you can do a stage all or you can do a specific file that you want once it is staged you need to give a commit message what you are trying to save so this is a demo commit once you have done that now you can commit this now understand this at this point that this commit is actually committing your changes in your local system it's not yet committed on your github repo or on your github branch to make these changes available on your github branch you'll again have to do a push and because you have already authenticated now it will not ask you for authentication again so if i do a push i'll see that this line will now be available on my branch here on the demo branch which is this testing line but the changes are still on my branch not actually on my main or master branch so if i come to my master branch i'll see that there is no detail here so 
all the developers who are working on one single project with multiple you know objects done by different developers they all do it on their own branches once their changes are done like i have done and if i want to then at this point you will see a message here either you work with microsoft as your uh, devops or you use github you will see that any time you update a branch it tells you that do you want to compare and pull request what a pull request is is to pull the changes from your own branch and then committing them into the master or the main branch so until unless i complete this step i'm not modifying anything on the master so if there is a testing happening that you need to test it others can test it here once everything is verified then you can go ahead and compare and pull request until unless i have done this i have not modified anything on the master or the main branch but my changes are stored on the remote repo nishan does that make sense yeah yeah sure i'll try that so but when i try when i i have made the connection but when i uh, uh, commit the changes okay at that time i am getting the error there are no secret key did you try to push the branch before committing the changes just try pushing the branch because then it tries to authenticate with your remote branch to your local branch and then if there is no credential attached it will pop up that message that you need to commit to that okay okay i'll try that uh, yeah try it pushing then and then you'll see that pop up window coming up sure 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 so yeah at, at this go ahead no no so sure, sure i'll do that then i'll if i not worked out i'll we will okay. next speak yeah <clears throat> So at this point, I as I was doing it just for the testing, I don't want it to go to my master. I can always delete this branch, and my master will have no impact of this change which I was doing on my own branch. So my master will remain intact. So keep that in mind. Never directly code against or code in or commit into the master branch or the main branch in Git, as it is called. uh sorabha uh, i have a question yeah. related to the branches suppose yeah. there are multiple branches and multiple people are working on the development mm -hmm. and one of the person has updated and published his extension publishes branch you can say that and the second person which is also working on his branch but he's get the error message related to like uh, the first person has modified something so we need to pull that uh, pull how we can pull that object from the branch for that other person working on because we need to download the symbols again or maybe we need to pull the all changes what is done by the first person so uh, you can so the first thing is anything that you are doing locally and you know different tools have different ways like i have done this okay. but i have removed this change from my you know master kind uh -huh. of thing right yeah, i even yes. have deleted this branch mm -hmm. so i if i do a pull right now mm -hmm. it says that there is no demo branch on the server that okay. means i have deleted it mm -hmm. so i can always come to my main branch where this is there and if the other developer has committed his changes mm -hmm. if i pull those changes they will be updated in my local repo no if it if the other person has not uh... put his changes into the main master branch but he has published the extension and that extension contains some modification in the table and if i try to publish and i am getting the error message like uh, this feed this and like are are you making different extensions for the same customer or are you making uh, one extension per one customer? one extension yeah one extension so if it is one extension then you should never build an extension based on a on a branch you should, your extension okay. should always come from the master okay but we are suppose uh, because the different developers are working and we are continuously testing the changes yes yeah, so or... anybody who have committed sorry anybody who has completed his change mm -hmm. 
right he should always yeah. commit it to the master or to the main branch okay so so that others can utilize it mm -hmm. okay okay that's fine then yeah thank you okay yeah so thanks. now we have how many five minutes and we are open for questions um, anybody have any questions Uh, uh, Saurabh, it's not a question, rather uh, it's a suggestion maybe for next topic or something. So uh, uh, what's new in API 2? People are talking about API 2 version 2. And uh, if uh, the second thing which I can suggest is uh, uh, ATDD testing, automatic testing of custom APIs. So these are two things that are, are there in my mind. This may be a topic for next sometime next in future okay so yeah version 2 apis are not you know that much drastically changed there are some features which are added against version 1 in version 2.0 mm -hmm. but in, next week I, I have this question pending from manisha about the json uh, kind of uh, handling kind of exporting he wanted to export some data so next okay. week we are talking about json anybody interested can be there on business central and then yeah I'll, I'll try to figure out differences between v1 and v2 uh, apis and yeah we can share it about it and the second i think you have covered atdd sometime you had a session on atdd automatic right. testing and all so how custom apis which are built uh, on business central how those can be tested using atdd so that's okay yeah because you know in business central you can have http web requests so you can actually invoke those apis within business central and that's what how you will test them you know as in you can input your kind of hard coded values in your automated test yeah. and then review the results are not there or there i, I can surely think about it yeah thank you okay brijendra you have something? Uh, Hello. No, right, not at the moment. Okay. Hello, sir. Dinesh, I'm I'm coming. I'm coming. Dinesh. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Dinesh, you have anything? No, sir. No. Thank okay. you. Well, sir, anything for today? No, sir. And uh, just uh, uh, just a recap on the editable part. The right. where we, we were trying to make page editable on our doc through the, our custom code. Yep. So what was the requirement? Uh, the requirement was that uh, based on action, I want to make sure that my page turns editable or uneditable okay. kind of thing. So basically, uh, I have tried it some sometime um, i think uh, two weeks ago mm -hmm. and uh, what i found that uh, the page property right that is a retrieval part is not accepting any variable not accepting any variables yes okay. so not sure actually it is saying that uh, it, is, it it is not expecting the uh, any variable actually very when you are trying to write that variable which we, right. you, uh, we are setting it through our code. Mm -hmm. So that variable is not coming. The intelligence is not detecting that variable. Anyhow, if if we uh, writing manually, then a system it is giving something error. So basically, the way around is to make the fast tab non-editable. So we can set editable property with our variable to the fast tab. But then it's not working on the sub form thing like on purchase order you can't control the lines as we were seeing in today's yes, kind of. yes, yes. it works on the you know main part but it doesn't work on the sub page but i'll give it a try let's see okay, okay, next okay, okay. thank you okay jay energy anything for today and uh, one more thing sort of so oh, go ahead. yeah so, no, thank uh, you. also if you include uh, um if uh, microsoft is releasing any new uh, new cumulative update regarding business central so if you brief about the what feature that they have released sure. 
that's not a problem we can surely yes. talk about it that will be great okay uh jignesh you have something jignesh if you are speaking i guess you are mute hello yeah yes uh, last week uh, i ha- i have gone through one uh, debugging point in al that is i would like to debug a job planning line there is a field quantity invoiced and mm-hmm. on quantity invoice drill down there is a one function i would like to debug at that point but somehow the system could not debug right. i have also sent uh, what is the error message i got to your email id that is a post server at gmail okay. uh, uh so that is my query uh, debugging is not done in standard code somehow uh, sometime it is uh, debugging it is working well sometime not okay so rather than going to the drill down functions did you actually went to that function call and then put a debugger point there Uh, on the drill down of the quantity invoice uh, field i'm go to yeah. that page and uh, go to that field and click on that drill down so debugging is go in that function but yeah, so not, what i'm saying is uh, into like that uh, if, yeah if you are trying to debug that and uh, let me see if there is something on this branch okay page let's create a new one okay close that table i might not have table. symbols on this so i'll not be able uh, to job planning line okay. page there is a quantity invoiced field okay uh okay job planning page yes job planning lines okay and there is a field called quantity to quantity invoiced is it invoice okay. yes yeah there is a so drill down job in yeah go to definition did you actually try to do this here oh because it actually what it is it's running a page show details false set parameters so what actually you want to debug because there is nothing to debug as it is just running a page called job invoices yeah uh, what uh, that is a uh, query related to that i need to debug like uh, in the job planning line i have that field right even though it is a value like it is a flow field mm-hmm. if you see that value and if you uh, try to see that what is the uh, value for that page like if i am click on the drill down system open the page but system not showing any data any lines or something even though the flow field having a value that's why i need to check that uh, why what system is doing and uh, after that what i have did i have create a same field as a uh, my extension like uh, add a same field and in that field if i am open that page and system will showing that lines uh, entries in the standard field system is not showing like flow field details value entry in the my custom field system mm-hmm. showing the same code same uh, value you copied the same code yes i have copied the same code in my extension field the same field i have add into my extension system showing that value in the drill down that is a uh flow field drill down page 
that's why just i need to know that why it is here, not here is what that function is called before your page gets loaded okay okay which sets it based on the detail level uh, job number task number and the planning line number okay and my only worry is about this set detail level and then what happens with that because on loading of this page which is the standard page actions on open page uh, okay create invoice find invoice and set these all our functions i'll have to kind of replicate that and i don't know in the cronus database that you have anything on the jobs or not you know okay okay because if it is if you have copied the same thing you are saying that you created a new tape page extension and copied the same field renamed it having the same formula if that's working then that should also work no 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 uh, what uh, is uh, i have did i have add this field into the page extension not added a new field into the table just add a this field into the extension and system will showing a drill down page entries why you add it you can just change the visible to true right it's visible false no 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 yeah i have tried to visible uh, true but system is not showing the details when i'm click on the drill down system not open the oh, system open the page but not showing the uh, lines detail even though will the you, flow field having a value will you see on the using the page inspector what filters are being applied on that page while it is getting open yes i have did all also and those filters are correct that they are supposed to be yes yes uh, filters are correct i just have correct. to somehow replicate it or maybe in the next meeting you'll have to share your screen to show us what you yes. mean yes but uh, if it is say... working as a custom field then it should work as it is i don't expect it not to be working so maybe i'll i'll check if there is job data otherwise okay. i'll create some no problem job data. Uh, but just uh, need to uh, i think one thing i would like to know that uh, is there any possibility some like uh, sometime debugging is not working in the standard code is it possible i anybody else have any experience i am not sure that i have seen that not happening i think uh, you said quantity invoice right let me drag it here okay it's already zero in this but but drill in down there you are saying that this is what's happening right it's coming as blank yes even though the flow fill having a value show system will uh, need to show that detail entries into that uh, job invoice page so before next meeting i'll i'll do some invoicing on this job and we'll see is it working or not oh. until this i have value i can't actually comment on on that okay anything else thank you thank you okay then we have couple couple anything nope okay nishant anything else yes uh, just a little thing how if how would i see the property of a field or a page like we used to see it in the nav shift f4 like something can we see can we do that in here base field property as in microsoft field property yes 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 so like yeah, you can to... see it here like like here it is right that's the visible I... set to false no no like this is fine this is i can write right i want to see the let's say i have added a field and i want to see those properties which are already there and i used to set them editable no and all all oh, the standard okay. property like that got it got it 
so if i'm adding a field t page field okay let's say uh, okay uh, sorry let me do a inside a table no so if i do a 60102 okay t table function 60102 so the only thing is that you can do a control space and see all these properties all these are the properties that you used to set they might not be in the same order but these okay, you know, okay. these are there i don't know what is available with the new al file wizard let me see if i create a new table yeah, so it gives me the basic very basic properties that i can set which is the id name data type length and data classification nothing right, else right, right. okay yeah. okay control space intelligence should be able to give you what you you know need the idea is to kind of set only those properties which you need yeah right right okay thank you okay because you have something else for us today uh not uh, nothing much okay yeah thank you all then enjoy your sunday and then next week we'll talk about uh, i'm i'm still trying to complete that we'll talk about the json export from business central and i'll see that i can even if i can do import or not so that's the idea to kind of test out on that that was a question from manish and we'll talk about that next week till then enjoy thanks thank sir you. thank you thank, thank you. you all thanks guys thank you sir enjoy thank you too yeah bye bye bye